All right, guys, so what I want to do is just go over what I think are the three biggest mistakes or biggest problems that older guys have with getting into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I'm talking specifically about you guys that are new to the art. Uh, you know, some of the baddest dudes you're ever going to roll with are, you know, in their 50s and 60s, right? But um, this goes for more of the, the people just starting. And I strongly recommend Jiu-Jitsu for, for older guys. You know, it's just it's great for your back. It's great for your flexibility. It's fun, it's engaging, and it's highly effective. And there's just all these great attributes, that you know, great aspects of it that I'm sure you already know, are aware of. But this is geared more towards the you guys that are just starting. And some of the things that I see happen with guys who are in their old 40s, 50s, and up, you know, um, new to the art. And really, this is sort of advice for anybody starting the art, but especially as we get older, the way our body works, we need to consider these things. So here are my three big points three big mistakes that I think see older guys doing. So number one is they're at the wrong school. Uh, make sure you get a good feel for what kind of dojo you're getting into. What is the rolling culture like? Are guys there just to, you know, win? Are they just there to, to train at a competitive rate? Do they not care who they're rolling with? They're just gonna roll the way they wanna roll. And, you know, regardless of where you're at, they're just gonna steamroll you. My opinion is not the best place for you to be training. And again, especially if you're older, dealing with injuries, you know, you want to recover, you want to learn the art, you want to contest it, you want to roll, of course, but you got to be smart and you got to be training with smart people. So be really careful of where you're, where you're going, you know, and or just be really careful of who you decide to roll with. There's some people that only roll at one pace. It's always competitive. They're rolling like they're training for the Pan Ams. So just be very selective at the type of school that you're at. Are they technical? Do they have a process before rolling? Do they just let everybody roll? Or do they try to gradually, you know, progress you in the art of rolling and the culture of rolling and what you're, what you're trying to do there, what you're trying to accomplish there, or is it just, you know, ego driven? So first and foremost, find the right place. Number two, big mistake I see older guys making with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is they start comparing themselves to their 20 something counterparts. Um, you know, and I've heard this quite a bit, and I understand it gets frustrating. You, you want to get better at this art. You want to learn the art, and you want to be effective, and you can be, and you will be. But it's hard to compete with the kid going four or five days a week and rolling, you know, 10 rounds a day um, in their progress when you're married and or have kids and or have a job and or have all these other things in life. You're only going to make it to the dojo two times a week, three times a week at best. So don't compare yourself to those people, right? You're at where you're at and be happy that you're at where you're at. Be happy that you're training and be smart about how you train. So try to get a lot into a little bit, right? Get really good at the fundamentals. Get really good at understanding each position as best you can, right? Versus trying to consume it all. There's too much jujitsu now. I'm not saying don't train things. Absolutely train things and learn them as best you can learn the new techniques or learn things that might seem like out of your realm right now, but focus more on the fundamentals. And again, especially for the newer guys, right? You're in their first year or two, get really solid fundamental understanding of what each position is, right? And what little movements you can do to control those positions or to have some control of the outcome and dictate the pace of what's going on. But again, don't compare yourself. Don't get frustrated with the 18 year old or the 20 year old, whatever, you know, the young people that can dedicate every day of their life to doing this art and they recover like that. You're just not there. So be happy that you're there doing what you're doing and be happy that you're at where you're at and focus in again in on those fundamental parts. Okay, lastly, the big mistake I see older guys make is they fight too hard when they start rolling. You know, again, I'm not saying roll over and, and lay down and die and let everybody walk over you. No, absolutely not. But you got to be smart with, again, rolling with people and especially upper level people, right? They are meant to beat you. If you're a white belt and you're rolling with a purple belt, uh, why do you think you should be shutting them down all the time? Try to learn from each submission, each sweep, each escape, all the things that you're failing at. Try to learn from it versus spending all this energy, everything you can to stop it. Again, I'm not saying that you just comply to everything or that you just roll over and play dead because who wants to roll with someone like that anyways, right? However, you have to be smart and know when you've lost to tap. If you tap a lot, you learn a lot. But I see guys, and, it's, and, and again, especially athletic guys, guys that have a history, 
you know, maybe they wrestled or, or, you know, maybe they did martial arts before or they were just high level athletes at one point in their life. Um, they're strong, they're tough, they're mentally tough and they don't want to submit. And I get it. No one wants to submit. But you have to consider that what you're trying to do is learn something here. You're trying to learn the art and the, your buddies that you're rolling with luckily aren't the guy in the street that's going to stomp your head if you lose, right? So you can tap. It's okay to tap. It's okay to tap and find out what's going wrong. Even ask, how come you got me five times in a row with that submission or whatever, right? Because you are here to learn and we want to be able to come back the next day and the day after and, and make this a longevity thing. So the harder I fight certain things, the more chance that I injure myself, right? And I've rolled with guys who um, fought things way too hard and, and they hurt themselves. You know, and again, as, as upper belts, it's kind of our responsibility to let these guys know, hey, you're in trouble right now. Your arm's about to break. Uh, but you're not, it, you can't always do it. And sometimes you think maybe they're legitimately fighting something and then you hear something go, you know, and it's because their ego got so in the way of their training that they're like, there's no way I'm letting this go. I see it happen all the time and all age groups. But for the older guys, especially, right, you want to come back the next day, right? So be smart with who you're rolling with. Be smart how you roll. If ever you're doing a move where your next thought is, I'm just going to explode into this movement, you're probably not doing good jujitsu, right? I'm not saying that there aren't ballistic movements that work, but what I'm saying is that if you don't know exactly all the pieces to that technique, but you're just gonna do some power move, you're being dangerous to yourself and your partner, right? So, you know, contest things, fight things, roll, but don't be, don't death grip things, don't fight things to the death, right? If, if better to learn how you lost that, what led up to you losing that, you know, getting your arm barred or getting a choke than it is for you to, to go unconscious or to have your arm hyperextended. So I think you would agree, right? So that's my third key is don't fight things so damn hard. So anyways, guys, I hope that helps a little bit. Find a good school out there that allows you to progress, that allows you to learn that people are willing to work with you, right? While beating you up, right? That's very important that you have a good balance, uh, that people bring you up just enough right that they're able to show you you know how things work and stuff and uh, but not just kill you and, and make it impossible to come back the next day and train because what's the point right we want longevity with this art so all right guys good luck out there thanks for watching see you next time